All right, next we're going to talk about something called succession. And again, this is in relation to how ecosystems change. Um, this one is over an extended period of time. Um, it does involve, it doesn't just involve uh, animals, it involves uh, vegetation as well. And uh, as always, picture says a thousand words, something like that. Um, this is a picture of succession, actually. Succession is, a, a, as it says here, a predictable pattern of change in an ecosystem. And this is typically how things roll. This is typically how things will change. Regardless of where your ecosystem starts out at, it can be like bare bones. It could be almost nothing. It could be bare rock, right? And first of all, you're going to get uh, very, very small and minute things growing, like lichen and mosses, just really small things. That will set the stage for larger things to grow. Um, next, in this line of succession, you're going to get little grasses, um, possibly some shrubs, um, maybe some tree seedlings. That's kind of jumping the gun a little bit, as I'll show you some other examples. Um, and then it, it leads you to bigger shrubs and some larger, younger trees, but still larger. And then you get to uh, a point where you've got a very, very healthy and a well-established set of vegetation. And this is what we would call a climax community. Now, what I, they don't usually include in this, um, this description of succession is what kind of animal life is, is living in these areas. So we're still going to start small here, right? There's going to be small insects, not a whole heck of a lot, probably no mammals, right? But as soon as you get into here, you might have some snakes, larger insects, and the odd bird, right? And then that just continues to progress until you get, again, to this climax community where you've got all sorts of big and small animal life. Lots of insects, different kinds of insects, tons of different types of birds and sizes of birds, mammals of various sizes, rabbits, fox, lynx, bears, deer, etc., etc., Right? So succession is just a, a word that describes this pattern by which nature progresses. Um, this would be a pioneer community, one that's just starting out, and it always ends up, if it's given the chance to, it always ends up in a climax community. Very, very, climax community is an area, I think I've got a definition here. Climax community is the end result of succession. It is, a very it is very stable and has great biodiversity. That means many different kinds of living things, plants, animals, insects, etc. Okay. Now I want to show you some uh, other pictures. Here's just another cartoonish type picture of what succession is like. Starts off with something very, very small and minute. And it, every year it just builds and gets more and more diverse right, until you get to a point where you've got an area that will sustain a very, very large number um, and variety of living things. Here's a real life picture of some succession. This is farmland. This is where this has started. So there's still some living things there, some insects, uh, possibly the roots of, of um, some of the plants that may have been there before. Uh, this is the first year. Right, so not a whole heck of a lot there. This one is a picture of what it looks like after two years. So we've got lots of grasses that, uh, and some flowers, right? Lots of grasses that have, have sprouted up just in, in the second year. Um, by the fifth year, it says here, we've got grasses. Kind of a, not the greenest uh, picture here, but uh, yeah, you can't really see this one very well. But there's more grasses. And then it's saying there is also some sedges. So we're looking at some shrubbery now, right? Um, and then that leads to, in 20 years, now we've got lots of shrubbery. We've got grasses very well established. And now you've got uh, spruce tree seedlings, right, that are actually very far along in their, their development. And you see, see this climax or what could possibly be considered a climax community in the background. And it, every year it just kind of, kind of creeps up, right? This is a big jump from, what is this, five years to 20 years, but it really jumps, right? So that's a, a real life uh, example of some succession there. Now, um, I don't have this in the notes, and I'm not sure if I 
should have taken it out or not. But there's two types of succession. Um, there is primary succession. Let me show you some primary examples of primary succession. If you look at, is this also? Yeah, okay. So in this scenario right here, what do we start with here? W what is there here that's living? Yeah, almost nothing, or there's zero living there. Uh, I think what really um, est establishes something as uh, primary succession is that there's nothing to start with. There's zero living there. And then you get your lichens and your mosses, and then away we go, and it, it ends up as a climax community. Um, here's some other examples of primary. This is a, after a glacier has moved past an area, right? There's nothing living there anymore. Um, right here is a, here's some volcanic islands, right? Right after the rock is cooled, after being uh, uh, lava, there's obviously there's nothing living there. So it's starting from zero as far as living things go. But even so, with something like that, it's going to end up, it's going to follow this same, same uh, pattern, right? That diversity and, uh, and such will continue to, if it's allowed to, will continue to progress until you end up with a climax community. Um, right, so that's primary succession. Six secondary succession is like this farmer's field. Is there anything living in here? Yeah, there probably are a few things. Insects, the odd plant, uh, worms, right? Because there's soil there. So in secondary succession is in areas where there's been a, a monumental event, like a, um, a, a mudslide or a, something like that, or a fire. That's a really, that's a classic example. Um, let's see if they've got some more pictures down here. Um, a fire is a really good example of an area that is uh, considered, uh, would be considered secondary succession. Um, but again, it doesn't matter if it's primary or secondary, they always end up as a, a climax community. I like this picture up here, actually. So regardless if an area is starting with nothing, zero, in which case it would be primary succession, or if it's starting in this area where there is some life, which would be considered secondary succession. That's the only difference between the two. Both of them will, like I keep saying, will follow the same pattern of development and growth until, if they're allowed to, until they become uh, what we consider a climax community. Now, the other thing that I wanted to just point out are uh, this thing right here, pioneer species. Uh, again, from this picture here, uh, it talks about, a, whoops, talks about a primary community, or sorry, a pioneer community. And that's just the beginning, right? That's at the very beginning. So pioneer species, those are the species, those are the species that first appear in areas that are lifeless. So those are the first organisms that appear, which makes sense with that word pioneer, right? The very first to be there. And that, my friends, is succession. <laughs>